What's up everybody, Kinetic here, and welcome to Rift, a now free-to-play MMORPG by Tryon Worlds. This game originally came out in about March of 2011, I believe, has received an expansion pack, and as of June 12th, I believe, just a little bit over two years later, it went free to play. So here I am. I am going to do a first look video of it to kind of show you the beginnings of the game, a little bit about the character creation, and give you my impressions about Rift and tell you uh, how how it 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 how can I say how it competes if it if at all it does in the MMO market as of now at this time that it's going free to play. Let's quickly take a look at the character. Whoopsie. Yeah! Let me stop screaming, dude, honestly. <laughs> Let me delete one of my characters. Yeah! So there you go. We noticed something there. You have a maximum character creation limit of two. All right, so from here, what we will do is we'll choose one of two different factions in Rift. We have the Guardians and we have the Defiance. Now, these, the big difference between these guys I would say right from from this point is their story and that the guardians as it says here are chosen by the gods to fight off the, the threat of the the evil coming out of the rifts and that is different from the defiance because they instead of empowered by the gods have been empowering themselves through technology and things like that to wage war against the rift invasions I will go ahead and first we'll show you what's available under Defiance because it is different than what's available under Guardians. So we'll go ahead and choose Defiance. Okay, so from here you can see we have male and female versions of three races. We have the Eth, the Kelari, and the Bami. I I'm not sure exactly if that's correctly pronounced or not. Bami, maybe? <laughs> And like I said, female versions of each of these. Now let's go back. And we'll take a look at the Guardians. And from here you will see we have three completely different races. We have the Mathosian, the High Elf, and the Dwarf. Of course, with their female versions. So between the two factions, there are actually different races to choose from as well. Let's quickly take a look at the female character creation options. From here, you will actually choose your class. There are four classes available in Rift, which might seem limiting, but I will talk about how that expands into actually a lot of choice and a lot of variety in Rift. So we've got the Warriors, the Cleric, the Rogue, and the Mage. And actually, you can kind of see already from here that there are some different roles some significantly different roles that each of these classes can play so you know you might expect tank damage and support from warrior but are you expecting healer from a mage especially when there's a cleric that's available but yes damage dealer healer and support from mage and from cleric surprisingly they can actually be tanks and that's because they were chainmail clerics were a chainmail which allows them i suppose to be tanks and they, of course, deal damage and heal. And for rogues, they can deal damage, apparently they can tank, and they also have support capabilities. Let's, uh, I don't know, uh, let's go for rogue, I guess, just to take a look at things. All right, so from here, it, it begins to refine a little bit more. We have, what is your purpose? A question being asked. If you are a rogue, what is your purpose? Well, maybe I'm a huntsman. So from here, you can see we get a, uh, a lovely bow and arrow set and a, uh, a beautiful warthog for our pet. <laughs> or maybe I'm a shadow stalker, which is, I suppose, perhaps more of a, uh, of a thief style, of, a, of a, a pure rogue. Planar Sentry. Okay, so here would be how the rogue develops into a tank, which is kind of interesting. Battle Bard. Uplifting powerful power of music to increase effectiveness. That's pretty cool. And Flame Trooper. But you might notice that Flame Trooper is red and it has a padlock which says requires purchase to unlock. Yes, Rift is free to play. And of course, because of that, without a subscription, they need some way of making money. Uh, this might seem with them locking out this 
this option here that, you know, they, perhaps they may be locking out a lot of options to be paid only, uh, but they advertise it as such that there are, what is it, no tricks, no gimmicks, uh, no traps or anything like that to get into the game. They don't lock a large portion of its content away behind paid options or things like that, but there are paid options, as we can see here, uh, for things such as extra um, extra roles as a rogue. And there is also still actually a subscription that is uh, available to players if they want them, and you get various benefits from that. All right, so let's take a look at the, the more in-depth character customization options here. It's, mm, I would say what's available here is 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 basic uh, this this isn't really in depth um it's not quite uh behind the bar either i would say it's it, these are basic this is a basic amount of options we've got a slider here that which bends your uh, your face around to either look like a fat slob or to something uh super ultra uh needs to go to kfc pretty soon to get some chicken because you look like you're so skinny you're dying uh or somewhere in between let's make her look a little bit healthy Say right about there. That looks good. Right about there. You're looking pretty healthy now. A little bit more pointy in the in the chin. There we go. That looks good. Okay. And we have features. Feature slider here, which uh, creates differences in shadow and light around your character's face. There we go. That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. We got eye color. Green eyes. Green eyes are sexy. Scale. You can scale up and down the eyes if you like. Eh, right about there looks good. Rotation. I like a little bit, like a little bit of angle and in eyes for the female. There we go. Right about there, looking lovely. Eyebrows. Woo! Got some pretty good options here for eyebrows. Everything from wicked to divine. That looks pretty good. Let's go with that. Nose options. Got nose size. A little bit of a uh, little bit of variety there, I suppose. And nose tilt. I don't think I'm gonna go for that. Let's bend it up a little bit like that. There we go, looking pretty cute now. All right, cool. And mouth size. Well, I don't really need lips as big like she just got punched. Let's let's tone it down a little bit. Also adjust the the, the width as you can see. So right, I would say right about there. That looks pretty good. Nice. Okay. Hair color, we've got the base color, and then we also have highlights. All right, and actual hair designs. One, two. I like ponytails, ponytails are cute. Anything long, I like long hairstyles. 12 in total for this female. She has 12 total hairstyles. Not too bad, not too bad. That actually looks pretty good right there. Markings, each of the races and uh, differences in gender will have a, a different variety of markings that you can place on your character's face. Or you can have nothing at all, if nothing really uh, seems attractive to you. That's kind of cool looking. Okay? And we can change the color as well. There we go. Makeup, this is uh, of course female specific, so uh, adjust this slider to something that uh, maybe you would like, and then you can also change the color as well for the uh, the lips, for example, there. That's kind of cool looking, all right. And then we have a skin color. Something healthy looking. Let's get something that looks, that looks okay. Right about there. Not too bright, not too dark. That looks good, all right. So yeah, there you go. There are the female options. We also have a preset, and I'm pretty sure if I slide this around, it's probably going to completely erase all of those options that I just chose, but what the hell. Oh yeah, there it, it warns you. So this will give you some more ideas on examples of what you can uh, possibly create for females. Which is pretty good. Alright, cool. Let's go back, and we'll, we're going to make a male character. A male Mathosian. And I will choose warrior. Because I like heavy armor. Alright, and just like before, we can choose sort of a, uh, a sub role for our class. I will go with destroyer. The shock trooper is a paid option. 
Uh, let's let's see if we can find. You know, honestly, I think that they should put this preset thing up here. Because I, I think that, I don't know, at least for me, I naturally start from this side and from the top uh, instead of from the lower right corner. I would think that this that would be a better place to put it. Because then players can do like I'm doing now. They can kind of start with sort of like a base, for example, like that. And go, ah, I like that. Now let's refine it. And then it can go to the face shape thing right here and then uh, kind of bend it around and go, ah, yeah, that's good for me. Okay, features. All right, let's go with that. Give him some nice dark eyes. Scale them down a little bit, dude. You're looking scared. And rotate them around so you don't look too depressed. That looks pretty good. Eyebrows. Hmm. Here we go. The ultra pissed off look. I like it. Nose, nose size. I would say that nose looks pretty good. That's too small. That's too damn big for this guy. I would say, yeah, right about there. And then we will go for tilt. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Does, does anybody actually go for this? Does anybody put, tilt their nose in any game that has a tilt that far? And I've seen many games that do. Does anybody actually do that? I mean, it looks ridiculous. He's just like sniffing his own upper lip. It's, it's kind of disgusting, actually. Right about there. There we go. That's looking a little bit normal. All right. And uh, mouth size. Yeah, I think what we had was uh, was pretty good there. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Back to this side. We've got... Uh, we'll go with Harris style. They, I, on, here's another one. They might... I would think it would be better if it was placed up here at the top. It's looking like uh, Logan Thackeray from Guild Wars 2 right now actually <laughs> all right so we'll choose our base and then a highlight color something something oh I like that that's a winner right there cool all right and then we'll go to markings which are different from the female versions of the same race wow that's looking real intense that's kind of cool all right let's go with that color yeah that's fine facial hair I'm a little disappointed that for what is sort of like a D&D inspired kind of fantasy world there are no real beards there's no big like hanging beards for any of these guys we got we got scruff you know we've got a goatees and mustaches and stuff like that but why not go for go for the go for the, the, the big ass beard you know what I'm saying but not for these guys. I guess if you want a beer, be, a beer, if you want a beard, you have to go dwarf. <laughs> that's the only race I think that gets beards in this game. Anyway, all right, color, yeah, that's good enough for me. Height, well, he's looking pretty heroic, so let's keep him at a heroic height. And I won't adjust the presets because that would screw everything up. All right, so kinetic JP. The king of Mythosia would have sacrificed the world to Regulos the Destroyer. The faithful rebelled against his heresy. We overthrew the tyrant and put his armies to the sword. Defeated in battle, he turned to the machines of the Defiance. Their devices drew upon the power of the dragon, a power they could not control. This is the day the rifts came. This is the day we died. But the gods of the Vigil intervened. Their messengers went among the fallen and ascended the worthy, not for their virtue, but for their might. In you, they placed their faith, their hope, and their power. You are our salvation. You are a guardian. It's interesting, each of the, the different factions, the guardians, and the, um, and the defiance, they each have their own opening. And they both blame 
the other for uh, for what's happening with the rifts and things like that. The Guardians, as you saw, they blame the Defiance for these machines that supposedly had something to do with the uh, their loss with the rifts and things like that. Whereas the uh, the Defiance talk about, well, it was the Guardians that destroyed our machines that preventing prevented us from defending ourselves from uh, from when the rifts began to open. I would like to mention that uh, what you're looking at here in Rift, graphic-wise, is set to Ultra. This is the maximum, I, apparently, that, uh, that Rift has in terms of its graphical brilliance. Which, when I originally looked at it through uh, videos and uh, pictures and things like that when Rift originally came out, it didn't really impress me. Um, I didn't think that it looked all that great. It does look a little bit better. Uh, in my eyes, now that it's on Ultra. Just a little bit. Alright, so let's talk to, uh, Sanctuary Warden here. Greetings, Ascended. Greetings, Cleavage. Uh, my lady. Uh, speak with Fane Doran. Okay, yes. You stand between Talara and destruction. Actually, it looks like I'm standing in between. Never mind. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over to this... Little Missy over here, Miss Fane Doran, to see through the eyes of the gods and talk to her. Finish a quest, start a new quest, a great for the and gods. she's gonna send me off on my way to go kill some people. Combat-wise, gonna right-click and then start hitting my one key. So that's all I got right now. Hit my one key. Wait for the global cooldown. Hit my one key again. And the Ashen Defiler dies. And I'm gonna repeat that. Like I mentioned earlier, Rift came out in 2011 and was well received in terms of its uh, Metacritic score. Uh, the big review guys also gave it pretty good scores and uh, generally speaking, it um, it was hailed as a as a successful and smooth MMO from uh, from its launch and uh, and seemed to do pretty well. However, it is now 2013, and I'm going to start talking about some of the, the good things that still remain with Rift, but uh, also I will probably be talking about some of, of the uh, the negatives with Rift now in uh, 2013. It has received. Quite a bit of content since it originally launched. In fact, it's, it, it may very well be an MMORPG with some of the most content that is available out there on the market. We've got a lot of things that you can do from what I can, I've can i heard in, uh, in the world of Rift, which is good. Games with a lot of content are, I think, essential to, uh, to survive out there in, in the market of MMORPGs. However, as you may have noticed from that uh, that combat, we're not talking about this right now. Um, what you may have noticed from that combat right there, and from the quests I'm being given right now, Rift doesn't really break the mold uh, in any way, shape, or form when it comes to its uh, its its action, the way that uh, you fight your character against other. NPCs and things like that in the game. The gameplay isn't really um, isn't really groundbreaking. And uh, here we are in 2013, and where once perhaps people were impressed by Rift's graphics back then, um, I would say that it is beginning to age very rapidly. I mean, this is ultra, but it's not really impressing me. Uh, not uh, not really at all, <laughs> visually, uh, or from its uh, fighting mechanics. I would say that this game actually is aging very rapidly compared to uh, other MMOs out there on the market. Or perhaps even I might go as far as to say that Rift was inferior compared to other games uh, available out there. I would say that Aeon's combat was, or is, better than than riffs as far as entertainment when you when you play your character and the way it acts and moves and fights and things like that um, I would say that, uh, that yeah e even Aeon was uh, is more entertaining 
Visually, it's it's about on par though, I guess, with uh, with with Aeon when it originally launched. But I suppose that's debatable. So in terms of, I guess, summarizing my feelings about it, the graphics and the uh, the gameplay that you're seeing right now, this is um, well, it's it's already pretty old for people that uh, that have been playing MMOs before and uh yeah it's not really going to impress any any uh, mmo veterans out there perhaps if this is your first mmo rpg you've never played one before then perhaps this will be entertaining to you but now we are seeing a lot of competition more than ever in the online mmo it's kind of redundant isn't it isn't it the mmo rpg market that uh, offer the same things if not better than, uh, than what Rift has uh, from those couple of things that I mentioned. Graphics and gameplay and the way that quests work here. As you saw from the couple past minutes now, all I did was go out, kill a few guys and collect a few swords and that's basically what Rift's questing system is all about. Unfortunately, is uh, the very predictable and uh, standard questing system. One of the things that Rift offered in the beginning, or still offers, I should say, but is no longer unique, is the Rifts. The Rifts were a, a, a unique and interesting new dynamic event system in the game that uh, meant that you could go around and, and travel the world and you would run into these Rifts, which would basically be like portals that would al allow uh, waves of uh, significant bosses and uh in enemies and things like that to come in and challenge you and challenge the area and be sort of like a like an entertaining activity that pops up you know once in a while and you can do it solo or you can do it with other people in the surrounding areas and that was cool it was a pretty good selling point for for rift at that time however it is now 2013 and now most mmo rpgs that have come out since uh, or around the time as Rift also offer the same thing. Guild Wars 2, for example, has a dynamic event system and it's really, really well crafted. Uh, I would say it, it's better than what I've seen Rift's uh, dynamic system. And, uh, and other RPG, MMORPGs that initially launched without a, uh, a dynamic event system have now added a dynamic event system to their game. For example, Final Fantasy XIV Online now has a, um, a dynamic event system, the Fate system, as they call it, which is more or less the, the same concept that a an event will will begin uh, at random, and it it will mean that players in the area can participate by being there fighting in the fight and uh, and get interesting rewards from fighting unique enemies from those events. <clears throat> but that is no longer a unique feature of Rift. So what is there left for Rift to offer? What else do we have that we can talk about? Perhaps that is a strength of, uh, of Rifts. Well, they do have... Uh, a lot of dungeons, they do have a lot of really uh, interesting PvP content from what I have seen and heard. A lot of games offer perhaps uh, PvP and uh, dungeons and things like that, but uh, they may not be as balanced. Oh, I'm not talking to, uh, to her, my bad. <laughs> uh, they may not be as balanced and interesting as Rifts, perhaps, but that's debatable. Since the expansion pack came out for Rift, they added a player housing system, which is pretty cool. That's not something that a lot of MMOs have out there. When they came out with their expansion, they added a player housing, I believe it's called Dimensions, which means that you can have your own personal house and things like that, which is really cool. They have mounts in this game, you won't be running around like you see me doing all the time, and the, the mounts do look pretty damn cool from what I've seen. Uh, mounts aren't unique, but the player housing is is something that, like I mentioned, not a lot of games do, and that is that could be something that might turn you on to this game. Strike when the iron is hot. Strike when the iron is hot. I will. 
Alright. At least, I suppose, with what is a very uh, now generic system of uh, questing and things like that, at least Rift does have good features uh, for its UI and things like that to help you complete your quests uh, smoothly and uh, efficiently. So we have a, um, a quest uh, log over here on this side. We can take a look by clicking on the little check mark there. You know, it'll bring up the information we need. You can also see from the minimap here, it's showing me the location of where I need to go. You can also see a little sparkling object there. That's what I'm looking for. Or if I'm completely lost and blind, I can also go to the map and it will bring up the exact location if it is an exact location kind of thing. Or there will be, for example, maybe a circle if I need to kill enemies within uh, a certain area, maybe five like blood-sucking vampires or something like that. It will give me a circle as to where those vampires would be. So that's good. Um, I would say that that's um, that's that's pretty standard, but um, always good, always good. Cause cause you'd be surprised there are still MMOs that are out there and that are being made that don't have uh, very good UI systems for uh, for helping their players and uh, their questing adventures. Got a little surprise there from uh, Mr. Deathbound Thrall. Nothing too serious though. And now we will click on the altar. And we have more boobies. Nice. Nice. So, what else can I talk about? Well, the, I mean, the sound quality is pretty good. Uh, some of the, the, the sound effects are a little bit generic, but the music is nice. That plays in Rift to kind of help you uh, get in the mood and feel immersed into the game, which is good. Oh, actually, I just remembered now. There is something else that I want to show you. And it's over here. The Soul Tree, which is basically Rift's skill tree system that they have in this game. This is actually pretty cool. I would say, if anything, this is one of the best things that I have seen about Rift is their their skill tree system, which is a little bit different from what you might expect. Uh, we've got three paths here, which is pretty standard. What you'll do is you'll click and you'll spend points to, you know, to go up the tree and you'll get perhaps new abilities and things like that. It's a little bit different here. As you spend points, if I spend a bunch of points here, it will actually unlock down here in the, the tree root new abilities. So if I spend two points, I'll get Punishing Blow. And that's how it works. For the amount of points that you spend here, there are a significant amount of abilities that will be unlocked because of that, because of you spending your points here. But here's where it actually gets more interesting and where the depth earlier that I was talking about co comes from. Now you can do things your way, right? You, of course, you can choose and put points wherever the hell you want. And but you also have down here these presets. And this might actually look a little bit familiar. Remember I chose Destroyer earlier. Now if I want to though, I can actually go ahead and I can go for Pathfinder, which is a little bit different and more of a support role. We we'll also have Defender, Dark Thane, Hoplite, Slayer, and Stalker. These these different presets here for my Soul Tree. And I, I think they added more of these since the uh, the expansion came out, which is pretty cool. I like I like this this preset system. It helps take your mind if you're not really interested in in getting into the the in-depth customization or something like that. It, it will tell you. Here's a, a different way that you can play your warrior. And it will give you the details and information you need to know to understand. If you want, perhaps... I don't want to talk to you right now. That's my phone ringing. My bad. <laughs> it, it will tell you from the descriptions here if you want a more a defender style or more of an attack style and, uh, and give you information like that. If you don't want to go with the presets, however, you can, like I said, apply your own points here and things like that. And there are actually a lot of guides out there that uh, players have created sort of like builds that uh, that will say spend a certain amount of points here, spend a certain amount of points here, and you can actually get some really really cool builds I hear from doing it like that. Even more powerful builds, more efficient builds than perhaps what might be available here, because that's just how players are. We we as players we when we're really hardcore about something, we can definitely find a way to to tweak and, and get more damage out of things. But for me, I'm just going to keep it simple for this, and I'm going to go with the Shoshoyer. 
click select, and there you go. It spent the points for me. I've got three here, one here, and I unlocked Punishing Blow because of that. Save and exit. Would you like us to automatically place abilities on your main and secondary ability bars? Sure, go ahead. Make my life even easier. So that's really cool. Like I said, I think that that's one of the the most interesting and uh, and helpful things, entertaining things about Rift is that you do start out with four classes, Warrior, Mage, Cleric, and Rogue, but it goes much deeper and uh, and more interesting through the, uh, the, the Soul Tree system. There we go, took him out. Calm your tits, madam. There we go. And one more to finish up this quest. Whoops. So that is pretty much gonna do it for me and my first look video. I didn't mean to click in between our legs, it just kinda happened. Um, <laughs> That's gonna do it for me guys in this first look video of Rift. I would like to kind of in closing say that I think that Rift is a good game. I think it was more impressive at the time of its launch, but I I think unless the the developer Tryon Worlds begins to add some some really interesting new things to the game, um, I think Rift is is already showing its age, even just two years after its initial launch. It's beginning to visually show its age through its uh, its graphics and its gameplay and certainly its uh, questing style. Of course, questing and leveling isn't everything, and one might say even that, uh, that that's, you know, the lesser part of the, the experience is leveling and things like that, but it still is a significant experience and if you want players to stick with your game for you know longer than just the first 10 or 20 levels or something like that you got to do something different otherwise they're not gonna be around to even care you know what your dungeons may be like or what your rift you know encounters might be like at higher levels or something like that i think with the competition the way it is now you really got to grab players and do something really really unique um, and among its competitors, uh, Rift versus Terra, Rift versus uh, Neverwinter, you know, these other free-to-play games, Aeon, honestly, I don't recommend Rift. That's my, that's my, that's my verdict, is that I can't recommend this game. If, if somebody asks me, hey, Kinetic, what free-to-play MMORPG should I play? I want, I'm want leaving World of Warcraft, for example, or whatever, and uh, and I want something different. I want something interesting and uh, and fun. I wouldn't recommend Rift at all, because it's, it's like World of Warcraft, but worse. It's, it, I mean, it's free, but it's not better than World of Warcraft in, in any way, I think. Um, not really. And, you know, with uh, Neverwinter, it has it has better visuals, it has a more authentic D&D &D style of uh, story and uh, an atmosphere about it. Of course, it, it helps because it is, in fact, a Dungeons & Dragons game. But, um, but for that reason, you know, if, if you want a, a Dungeons & Dragons style of uh, free-to-play MMO, well, there you go. Neverwinter for the win. Uh, if you want something that has more interesting, maybe fighting mechanics, then I would say go for Terra, with its uh, its fighting gameplay and uh, and features like that. It's actually really entertaining, and it's very entertaining visually to watch your characters fight in Terra. Uh, much more so compared to watching my guy uh, slash at this NPC uh, here in Rift. And uh, then, like I said, we also have um, Aeon which has kind of a, I don't know, a kind of a, a mix of, uh, of a lot of other elements that uh, you might expect from MMORPGs out there, but it's really well done. It might be kind of like a WoW clone, much like Rift is, but I find that um, things like the flying mechanics, for example, in, uh, in Aeon make, uh, make Aeon stand out 
uh, apart from just being a WoW clone, um, and gives it something unique, something special about it. What is special about Rift? That's that's the question that I asked when Rift first came out, and it's still a difficult question for me to answer. What is interesting? What is unique uh, and fun about Rift? I don't really know, but uh, I'm not gonna stick around to find out, really. If you guys happen to be playing Rift, and you're watching this video, then I hope that you don't take my my opinions and my observations uh, too harsh. This is just how I feel as a uh, as a first impression video. If you think that the game is uh, is better than that, then by all means leave your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. If you've never played Rift and uh, you have something to say as well in the comments, by all means, as always, I read all of your comments and would like to hear what you think about Rift and uh, and how it competes sort of in this discussion like I'm saying against the growing market of uh, MMORPGs including free to play MMORPGs until then that's going to be it for this video guys I would appreciate if you click the like button to support my videos and my channel it helps out a lot and there will be more first look videos perhaps no, not so opinionated as, as this one was of other online games to come and available now. So yep, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again for watching. My name is Kinetic and I'm going to kick this trader's ass. I'll see you next time.